Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's autoimmune table talk. Oh. <laughs> this is Dr. Maggie Yu. I'm a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform Protocol. Today, we just got a, you got a little sneak peek. We're actually going to be looking at um, a red table talk that Jada Pinkett Smith and her family did with Dr. Mark Hyman. And it's about functional test results for their family. And I'm really fascinated to actually do a live reaction uh, video to the session that they had with Dr. Hyman. And, um, and it's really an interesting story, which is how come the rich, what, you know, even if you're rich and famous and you have money, does that mean even with the top functional doc or one of the most visible functional docs, does that mean that you have the health results and outcomes that you uh, want to get? Um, I think we're going to be very surprised. They're going to be, I'm wondering um, if there's going to be things I'm going to be like right on. And are there going to be things I'm going to be like, eh, that's exactly what they're missing. So this is going to be a fun uh, reaction video that we're going to do. It's just you wait. Hey everyone, I'm Maggie UMD and I'm a functional holistic medicine physician and created the Transform Protocol to turn around any autoimmune issue around naturally. And if you haven't joined our Facebook group, make sure you join our Facebook group, which is Transform Autoimmune Disease Naturally. Um, check the copy, check the, the copy above or the link below in chat. We'll put a link to join the Facebook group if you're watching. If you're watching us from YouTube, give us a thumbs up, thumbs up give us a subscribe. Um, that'd be really great to help us with the algorithm gods of YouTube. Uh, and right now, if there's anybody that you know that's struggling with autoimmunity and you think they could benefit from learning from this video, put their name in the comment section. I'd love if you're an alumni or anybody that's done any of our programs, type in the chat uh, what autoimmune struggles you've been dealing with and what are some of your outcomes. And if you don't know anything about me or about Transform or that you can get autoimmune disease turned around, type in your health struggles right now in chat right now um, in the comment section. Uh, and check your messages, uh, check message requests in about a couple hours later, and we'd be able to reach out with some resources uh, from our team. But join our Facebook group if you get a chance right now. Today, big today, we are actually going to be going through a reaction video. Um, I'm going to, um, we're going to be showing a clip right now shortly. And the clip is um, a couple years ago, the uh, Smith family, uh, Will Smith, Jada Pinkett Smith family, um, had a had a show where Dr. Mark Hyman, one of the uh, one of the functional medicine physicians that um, a lot of you may already know, um, did some functional medicine testing on them and revealed these <clears throat> surprising, shocking results in them and what they needed as a family to do to deal with a lot of their symptoms. Now, before we go in, though, I want to point something out here. We know now that um, Jada has been dealing with autoimmune related alopecia, hair loss. And something that I can already tell you right now is that it is clear to me that in this conversation, that really never came up. And it's like the elephant in the living room. And um, that to me is the biggest miss. People don't realize, number one, autoimmune moms have kids with autoimmunity. So three of the members of this family is struggling with autoimmunity. And there's grandma here. Grandma gave birth to mom. So there's four members of this family that have autoimmune genetics. And so I just want to, before we jump into this clip, I want to point something out. And I'm going to add this to the stream, which is this is the transform protocol. This is the five pillars of transform. If you count mindset, six. And I want to like give you guys this framework. So as we go through this reaction video, um, let's see what are the boxes that gets covered and what's missing. This is why they're not getting results and outcomes, okay? So if you take a look here, we got blood sugar mastery, food mapping, hormone mastery, gut and digestion mastery, and nutritional deficiency, and of course, mindset work. This is my transform protocol. So I'm going to be looking at a very critical eye at what Dr. Hyman recommends for this family, what are some of the symptoms that they're talking about, and how it fits into these pillars, and what they got right and what they're entirely missing. So here we go. The first clip is going to be showing you why did, did this show. On this red table talk, ah! the eye-opening results of our medical tests are in. You all have leaky gut. All of us? Yeah, pretty much. And I get a big old surprise. Okay, wait, 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 w
wait, wait, wait. She'll be fine. Willow, she's, she's going to be fine. Her. This was the most shocking thing in the episode. So <laughs> I love that. Uh, you can see already that this family is already, you can already see that there's going to be some things about leaky gut that they're going to be talking about. This family all have some symptoms and Jada has a big surprise. Surprise, surprise. Apparently it's funny. I'm watching just their reaction themselves. And of course it's hyped for the show, but it's real. They're shocked by some of these things, but I will tell you right now, none of what they're talking about and going to talk about is shocking whatsoever to me because these are the underlying things that's fueling autoimmune disease. So, uh, I can't wait to actually dig right into this. So, the, so, um, Dr. Mark Hyman, just so you guys know, is a very famous functional physician, um, part of Cleveland clinic. Um, he's very well respected, uh, and he has his own podcast, TV show, um, different, um, different forms of, uh, he has a great podcast. Uh, I respect him highly. And in here, he's going to be revealing results to this family. So let's take a look. Um, the next clip is going to be him revealing, um, as you already know, one of my pillars is blood sugar mastery mastery. Okay. I don't dabble in blood sugar, but blood sugar mastery is really important. And here's the thing that's really important for you guys to understand from an autoimmune expert standpoint, I do want to point something out. Just because someone is a really great functional physician does not make them an autoimmune expert. I repeat that, okay? And that's important. And that's something I'm going to talk about here is, is that we want to talk about things in an autoimmune framework, okay? Which is, I am an autoimmune expert, so I'm going to look at this with that eye to give you insight on what they're missing. There's a whole missing elephant in the room that this is about autoimmunity, okay? Um, so one of the framework in our, in our program, one of the pillars is blood sugar mastery. And I say mastery. And a lot of people think that means you just cut out carbs and you call it good. If cutting sugar is all it takes and you call it good, you guys don't need me. We, you know, and so I would love to hear this part of the conversation. I know there's a clip here about the genetics around sugar. Let's play that clip. A starch and sugar become overweight and diabetic. Oh, okay. Well then no starch. And, and you also, <laughs> and you also have genes that make you crave sugar. Oh, yeah. Oh, and make yes. you want a snack. That's a big problem because African-Americans are twice as likely to get diabetes. Right. They're four times likely to have kidney failure. Oh They're three God. and a half more times likely to get amputations from that. And so you're all at risk for that. Starch and sugar. Yeah. The trick to fixing that is fat. So oh, when you eat okay. the right fats, you got that right. it cuts off the hunger right. and it right. stops the craving. So if right. you, you know, most Americans I'll start their it. day with sugar, right? Breakfast cereal is 75% sugar, muffins, bagels, yeah. pancakes, Jaden. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, now sugar, everybody loves sugar. Yeah. So I don't say get rid of sugar. I just say, think of it as a recreational drug. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, I love that clip. Um, so this is a really great clip because um, he's talking about how the genetics that they have is to crave sugar and is linked with them being African American. While that's true, right? Certain races can have more predisposition to have a problem with blood sugar. I'm here to tell you, everybody with autoimmune disease, regardless of skin color or race or tribe you're from, have a huge blood sugar issue. So interestingly, in autoimmune disease, which is one of our pillars is blood sugar mastery, is that people with autoimmune disease have really brittle, they have a lot of highs and a lot of low. They're constantly high, low, high, low, crashing up and down all the time, right? And that's not an African-American related only issue. It is an autoimmune disease issue. And whenever people hit really high and they hit really low, the lows is what makes people crave sugar, okay? Crave sugar. So people with autoimmune disease crave a lot of sugar and they want to eat a lot of sugar, which drives that sugar up. And here's the other secret here. Whenever there's a blood sugar that goes from high to low and then low to high, boom, it flares the autoimmune attack. That's link. It's not just about diabetes. A lot of this conversation for people, it's like, oh, I'm not a diabetic. I'm fine. Nobody in my family's diabetes. I'm fine. I'm not African-American or I'm not Asian, so I don't have diabetes. I'm fine. Not true at all. It's a huge autoimmune issue. So um, what I'm here to tell you is that it's not about whether you get diabetes or not. By the way, diabetes is an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune <laughs> diabetes is an autoimmune disease. Okay. So we're talking, he, what he's talking about, African-Americans are at higher risk for having blood sugar issues and diabetes, autoimmune disease. So anybody with a family history of diabetes has an autoimmune disease gene in their family. So remember, autoimmune moms and dads have autoimmune kids. Okay. So that's a big thing. 
So I want you guys to know it's not just an African-American issue. It's not just if you're a diabetes or not issue. If you have autoimmune disease, you have blood sugar help. What I loved about what Dr. Hyman said is the answer and solution to that is fat. But I would say it's not just fat. I, I, I heard Willow say, oh, just cut the starch. I'm done. Bull, bull, bull. This is the biggest mistake that people can make is to sit here and just say, I'm going to cut all starch. That's not true. I like what Mark said about being like, um, just, you know, think of having sugar, like just say sugar, straight sugar as a recreational drug. I like that. I love that analogy. I hate it. What Willow said, oh, all starch is gone. Let's just cut all the starch. Again, this isn't about cutting all carbohydrate. Okay. Sugar in itself quickly turns into high blood sugar. Yes, I agree with that. That is look at it as a recreational drug, but starch, think about starch. There's so many starches that could be really healthy for you, high in fiber. Um, so this is what I'm talking about is people don't understand. It's like sweet potatoes, a great starch. There is starch, uh, carbohydrate content in nuts and seeds. Um, vegetables are, there are uh, starchy vegetables. Even vegetables have carbohydrate. That doesn't mean they're all bad, right? So people have a big misunderstanding and they don't understand what blood sugar mastery really is about. So I I could already see it right here. Willow was saying what a lot of people would say, which is just cut the sugar, all the starches, I'm gone. Well, it's more than that. Mark is saying fat is the solution. That also isn't a full solution. Fat is not the only solution, which is for me in our program with Blood Sugar Mastery, one of the really important things I've talked about is the balance of macronutrients, which is what's fat, protein, and fiber. Okay. So, and that takes work. There's a lot of myths here that are feeding into this. Uh, and so you could see that they represent, and I love their genuine reactions, is they re represent things that you guys would say. I would love for people who are alumni right now or people who are in the audience, um, tell me if, if, what were some of the, if you have done the program, what were some of your biggest ahas about blood sugar? And the thing is, a lot of people think this blood sugar thing is just about your weight and it's not, or it's about becoming, whether you're a diabetic or not. It's not. Somebody just said something symptom about itching. Uh, some people started talking about, is it now okay then to eat fruit? Like it's so much bigger than that. Um, and well, blood sugar fluctuations, I said flares autoimmunity. So you guys get joint pain. Guess what? That's when your blood sugar, you guys get headache. That's blood sugar, anxiety attacks, your insomnia waking up in the middle of the night. That is blood sugar. This isn't just a simple of cravings or weight or being diabetic or not. It has links to every single thing that has to do with autoimmunity. So I love that this is the topic. There is no shocker here. I hope you guys know blood sugar mastery is going to be really key. Next uh, clip that we're going to be talking about is, um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, there's a great clip of Willow talking about this. There's an, uh, Can we show the next clip about Willow? I would love to see that clip. Crashing blood sugar has killed my sleep. You got it. Wendy, you're right. Go ahead. It sucks because I would think about it a lot. I would think about like, oh, I need my carb, I need my vegetable, and I need my protein, and I obsess about it, mm. and I, I like, what the hell? Bean, bean. <laughs> like, I eat so no, much I, I feel protein. what she's saying, though, because well, I'm a little stressed now, too. What the hell? <laughs> no, but it's true because I'm basically, if I'm going to be thinking the same but this is the process of education yeah. so you're going to get educated yeah. so you're going to make wiser choices right so here's the thing food trauma i mean to me willow is saying the exact right thing which is well how am i going to be balancing my fat my protein my carbohydrate but what i'm seeing in her is trauma i mean it's become an obsession uh where for me it's if anything you guys know about me is i'm a foodie <laughs> I'm not just an MD. I'm not just a functional MD. I am a foodie. I freaking love food. And so um, what I deal with is so many of you guys have been traumatized um, by these recommendations. So people are asking, oh, can I ever eat fruit again? And can, you know, there are all these rules that you think are going to happen. And for me, the beauty of being able to work with someone like me or a really good functional nutritionist in our program and having the framework is this, is that you got to let go of uh, how do you let go of that anxiety and trauma around food? Well, you need you need to be educated, like Will said, number one. But number two is I really feel like people need support uh, and mentorship. Like for me, my mindset around this is that it's not hard. It actually can be fun. Uh, you can explore this. Uh, it's not just, oh, let's cut the starch. Oh, my plate has to have a third this, this and this. Throw the rules out. 
Like we got to get to people to experiment, love food and have fun with food and have to make delicious food. So if you guys have seen, I've made plenty of videos with me cooking and having fun in the kitchen. Uh, I love to cook. So for me, getting through that past through some of these rules and food trauma, which is called what I call, it's not just the education, it's mindset work. Willow has a big you know, it's stressful for her to even think about this. And I'm sure how many of you are stressed out just even listening to her talk. Um, but for me, let's de-stress it. So I love to bring that certainty, bring that fun, bring that creativity. There needs to be a mindset shift around food. I love food and food loves me. That needs to happen. That can make this much easier. So that's why being in a group and being in a community support environment in the environment uh, in our program has made a big difference. I'd love some of the alumni uh, to talk about some of their journey past food trauma. But Willow, that was a great way of just representing food trauma. Um, so next, I would love to talk about uh, the next pillar that we talk about is about in our program, we have vitamin and nutrient density. And a lot of people are talking about what vitamins and minerals are really most important. And we're going to be seeing some clips about vitamin and minerals, which I'm going to talk about. But before we even dig into that, I'm going to let you guys know the biggest reason why people with autoimmune disease have these vitamin and nutrient deficiencies in the first place is because your digestion sucks. Did you know that there are many steps in digestion, but people with autoimmune disease, even the first step in digestion, which is low stomach acid, by data, 90% of people with autoimmune disease have low stomach acid. So if you have low stomach acid, how can you absorb B12? How can you absorb iron? How can you absorb calcium, magnesium? All these things that everybody's telling you, buy these really expensive supplements uh, or nutrients at the same time, you're not digesting it and you're not absorbing it. So that's missing in this whole conversation. I want you to know nothing in this video talks about digestion. So in our program, that's huge. And I even last night did a quick little training about digested. Um, which is a multi-phasic digestive enzyme designed specifically for people with autoimmune disease where multiple phases of digestion is broken. So if you want to check out that video about digested or check out the website on that product, I actually do a whole training around why digestion is the holy grail. So at, instead, we're talking about the results of what happens when you have poor digestion, which is these vitamin deficiencies. So let's take a look at what the results are. So uh, let's take a look at this next clip. B vitamin deficiencies, B12, folate, B6, okay. which are really common. All, all of you genetically have a risk for that, mm -hmm. and you all need a lot more of those. And they help your mood, your energy, yeah. and even colon cancer. And when you have a polyp, yeah. mm -hmm. part of the reason they develop is you don't have enough of these B vitamins, which protects you from getting cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everybody think about this. So he's talking about B12, one of the vitamins. It happens to be, B12 happens to be one of the vitamins that's so important for stomach acid to absorb. And do you know, if 90% of people with autoimmune disease have low stomach acid, guess how many people with autoimmune disease have low B12? At least 90% of you who are listening to this video right now. And that's from poor digestion. Like, and he's talking about the genetic. I mean, you can do a lot of expensive genetic testing to sit here and be like, oh, I have the gene for this load, this load, that load, that. Okay. But you know what the real problem is? You have the genes for digestion poor digestion. So if you solve the digestion problem by taking a digestive support enzyme, by understanding where the digestion is broken, by being able to fix digestion, you can fix all these vitamin deficiencies. And having low B12, how many of you have brain fog? Neuropathy. How many of you can't sleep because B12 is required to make melatonin? How many of you have anxiety and depression? B12 is required to actually make serotonin in some of these brain hormones. And guess what? It's not just B12 that's the end result. It's from the digestion problem. Let's go farther back. What's, what's the fire hose feeding the autoimmune fire? So I love, he got it right. B12 is very important, but cause was never talked about here. He's saying it's genetic. You're just prone to this. So what? They have to take B12 for life. And even then, would they even absorb it? So the underlying problem there, digestion. Huge for people with autoimmune disease. One of the missing holy grails. Let's go to the next clip. 80% of African Americans are vitamin D deficient. 98% including all of you. So uh, it's really a big problem because mm -hmm. it increases your risk of infection, oh cancer, diabetes, mm. brain issues, muscle yeah. aches, fatigue, all that stuff. So your vitamin D was pretty low, it's 28, should be like, you know, over 50. Vitamin D, um, okay. So I love this conversation around vitamin D. Mark, you got it right on, okay? But it's not just a vitamin D issue because they're African-American. Specifically for people with autoimmune disease, just so you know, 
we actually need a much higher level. He's talking in the clip about you want vitamin D 50 and above. Uh, in autoimmune disease, I actually love for people to be even more closer to 80 to 100. Be why? Because vitamin D specifically in autoimmune disease is huge because vitamin D is not a vitamin, it's a hormone. And there's a vitamin D receptor on every cell of your body, like an on-off switch. So vitamin D, he mentioned colon cancer, cardiovascular disease, holy hell yes. But for autoimmune disease, when you get to optimal vitamin D levels, it actually helps with the other hormone levels. It actually helps calm autoimmunity. And yet we have physicians who know nothing about autoimmune disease sitting here telling people, oh my God, your vitamin D is 80. Stop your vitamin D. Well, there's actually different ranges for people with autoimmune disease to be higher. This isn't an African-American problem. This is everybody with autoimmune disease. We need to actually have a higher range of vitamin D than normal, which brings me to the point of, are there functional labs that are completely different value-wise for people with autoimmune disease versus the normal population? Yes, yes, and hell yes. Which is why for me, I hate the idea that in this family, the conversation about autoimmune disease isn't discussed. So he's like, 50 and above is great. Okay, for the normal population, yes. But mom has autoimmunity. That means grandma does or grandpa does. And that means all the kids have that gene. So they actually need to have even higher level than that. So I love this discussion. And vitamin D absolutely is crucial for dealing with autoimmunity. And people are going to be like, what dose should I take? It's based on your data. This is why functional lab values, understanding what the ranges for that are optimal for people with autoimmune disease is so important. But I love the fact that Mark is bringing it to this family and it's bringing it to the forefront. We really need to talk way more about vitamin D uh, in terms of autoimmunity. So I love that. Okay, so let's move on to another pillar. And this, again, though, many of these vitamin deficiencies because of what? Poor digestion. Uh, I would love for people who've tried Digest It or for, for alumni who've actually worked on the digestion, if they are sharing some results in the comment section, I'd love for you guys to share in the comment section. I'd love to be able to maybe bring some of those comments up to the screen so you guys can really understand what happens when you turn off the fire hose of digestive problems, how many downstream effects that brings up. So I love that. So I love that. Thank you for uh, some of that feedback. Next, what we're going to do is we have some clips where the family's really talking about what we they came in saying all these leaky gut problems. So let's take a look at the next clip. Um, next couple of clips are going to be about their gut issues and gut issues, by the way, in autoimmunity is huge. And just to show you guys this um, diagram again, gut health. And I want you to look at our pillar of gut health as really digestion and gut healing. Okay. Digestion and gut healing. Um, so we talked a little bit about digestion because it relates with the nutrient deficiencies, but how do you deal with, uh, digestion and gut healing, um, is part of our pillar. Some of these next clips, let's talk about that. Is Jade. So you always complain about your stomach. Yes. So what, what do you eat? Like what's your, what's your, I definitely eat pancakes in the morning. Sometimes I will it, this is rare, but sometimes I'll not eat pancakes and like have like a salad with like grains and like avocado toast in the morning. You know, your stomach hurts when you eat certain foods. Yeah. Right. And it, and it's why you don't want to eat so much because you feel sick when you eat. So mm -hmm. you tend not to eat. Right. Yeah. That's just one problem. Right. So it's right there. He's saying that he feels sick when he eats. Right. And how many of you guys actually feel sick when you eat like bloated? <laughs> or the food feels like it's stuck in your stomach here, or you get diarrhea or constipation when you eat. So it's, it's it's that whole food trauma thing is caused by a real digestive problem there. So for me right there with, um, with Jaden's talking about just feeling sick when he eats many of this, a lot of times people think that's a food allergy, but the missing Holy grail here is he's not digesting his food. He might be nauseated and bloated because he's low stomach acid. Um, so a lot of people call things leaky gut, but he's telling me some telltale signs of a digestive problem, digestion problem. Um, so can di can not digesting your food in the first place, um, cause more allergens and al food allergies to show? Yes. Can it cause more things that cause inflammation to actually go through your body and your bloodstream? Yes. So that really does re reiterate a digestion issue for me. So that's Jaden's food trauma. Totally for me right there is a digestion issue that I see based on his symptoms. Let's take a look at the next clip. And meanwhile, let's take a look at some of these comments. I think you got kind of interesting because you're all related and you have very similar genetics. Uh, yeah. Lactose intolerance. Oh, we are. Lactose really? intolerance. We're yeah. lactose intolerant? Yeah. So when you eat dairy, it could. You feel it. 
feel bloated. All of right? us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. You have the G <laughs> That's probably you what have your problem is. One of them. 75% of the world is lactose intolerant. It's the yeah. normal thing. Yeah. We're not, it. most of us can't tolerate dairy. You should only know about your digestion when it's time to go to the bathroom. Right. And it shouldn't be running there. It should be okay. Okay. So I love that they, there's some discussion here. So lactose intolerance. So a lot of people think that, that when they deal with dairy, that it's actually a dairy allergy issue, which some people can. And without food mapping, you can't tell. Okay. But speaking about it is I love the fact that they're bringing this up as a digestion issue. Do you know that genetically many of us lack the genes to make the enzyme lactase to digest the sugar in milk and dairy products, which is called lactose. So, uh, most African Americans and most Asians actually are genetically have the gene to lack that enzyme. So we can't even digest dairy. Um, but that's not just us, the rest of you, uh, many people, like if you look across the general population, even European population, at least 50% of you are actually have lactose and intolerance. again, another digestive issue. So, uh, people need to be able to tease apart what the problem is. Is it a digestion inability to digest dairy versus an allergy to dairy? And if you can't tell the difference between the two, you could be chasing your tail because if it's a digestion problem, let's say you're di you can't digest dairy, you can take lactate and still eat the dairy, right? So that opens up a world of possibilities. It's not all dairy is bad just because you have lactose intolerance. That's a digestive problem, not an allergy problem, and may not even be an autoimmune problem. This is my big issue with all these elimination diets, AIP, all these things. People are like, if you have autoimmune disease, no dairy whatsoever. That isn't true. Um, if you um, do food mapping and you figure out you could eat dairy, what if you can just, you figure out what if I can't have milk, but I can have hard cheeses? How much of a difference would that make? What if you figure out I can't have cow products, but I can have goat products or sheep products? How much fun would that be? Okay. That's the specificity, specificity of the food mapping segment of this program and why food mapping is so important. And it's important for people not to jump the gun and not understand there's different ways with which you could react to dairy. In this family, they have lactose intolerance. So if that's all they had and they took some lactate with it, they could eat dairy, but they haven't done food mapping. There's no food mapping that's discussed in this video. So th could they have an actual food sensitivity or an autoimmune reaction to dairy products? We don't know. So that's missing. I'm not here to identify what's missing. So even you have a top doc, even if you have a lot of access to this, the money for this testing, all stuff, they have gene for lactose intolerance. Uh, it's still, nothing is here is about digestion and also about the fact that you need to separate lactose intolerance from actual lact um, dairy allergy here, right? Or dairy sensitivity. So I love the fact of being able to like really fine tune this so that it opens up possibilities for people. But it's no shocker to me that they're lactose intolerant, but it is something I teach in the program to be able to have discernment. When you actually have your food mapping results in front of you and you understand it, and you actually understand all this about digestion, I can be like, hey, you, What's the dairy reaction that you have now? And I can tell you 100% of the alumni, people who go through our program and be like, oh, that was lactose intolerance or, oh, that's a food sensitivity or, oh, I have an anaphylactic reaction to dairy or, oh, dairy causes mucus production. They know exactly what that reaction is about with that specificity, that certainty. So when they actually go and eat food, they can be like, I can have hard cheeses. I can have goat cheese. I can eat sheep cheese. It's not just, oh, the whole entire category is gone. This is a really, this is what's missing. Uh, it's this depth and level and framework for understanding how complex this issue is. And yes, you can be trained how to answer these questions. Yes, you, but it does require the understanding of the module, not just of uh, the gut health part of the program, but also food mapping. With food mapping, this is missing in this video. There's actually testing specifically that you can do with us to identify which foods is triggering the autoimmunity. And most food testing out there is shit. And most doctors out there don't understand even how to understand those results. Why? Because people with autoimmune disease have tons of false positive and false negative because they have hyperreactive, um, very irritable immune system. So it makes it doubly hard for people to get accurate test results. So that's why I created food mapping. And that's what's kind of missing here. Um, but I'm really glad they're bringing up digestive issue with dairy. Let's go to the next clip.
fatigue, yeah. sensitive stomach, feeling weak, tired every exactly. day, anxiety. That leads to the leaky gut. And so you've got gluten, dairy, and eggs are also a problem for okay, you. Okay, then I'm gonna, I've been eating eggs for my whole life, a lot. So I'm gonna stop doing that. Yeah. yeah. And the best thing to start the day with is fat and protein. Yeah. Avocados, yes, so, nuts yeah. and seeds, you know, all that stuff will help you to keep your sugar even, exactly. not have swings, not have cravings. Because that craving stuff is not because of lack of willpower. Yeah. Well, if your gut's a mess, you're not gonna have the right appetite. If your yeah. hormones are out of whack, you're gonna be craving the wrong things. Yeah, exactly. Well, he said hormones. And just to finish up with you, you also have a lot of nutritional deficiencies, yeah. right? All the B vitamin yeah. things, the B vitamin things affect anxiety. Yeah. Vitamin D causes fatigue, depression. Yeah. They That's call true. it SAD or SAD, yeah, right? So uh, a couple things here is that um, he mentioned, they mentioned eggs as well. So I'm just going to let you guys know is, is that one of the issues when a doctor tells somebody, it sounds like they might have had some food sensitivity testing done. I'm concerned here because just FYI, based on our food mapping process, all the different types of tests that I've done, most of the time when people test positive for eggs, it can be a false positive. Uh, and I hear this all the time, people, people coming in saying, I've been avoiding eggs this whole time because this other test said I had to avoid eggs. But the problem is with people with the autoimmune population is they frequently test false positive to eggs. And in our food mapping process, I show you how to tell the difference between the two. So then truly the people that are intolerant to eggs is actually a very small amount. I would say one out of 20. Um, but yet if you go and look at these test results for people with autoimmune disease, probably 20% of the time it will test positive for eggs and it's a false positive. So this to me also highlights the invalidity of a lot of these tests. Uh, and a lot of times if someone is not an expert in autoimmune disease and they're taking a, this food test and they're applying it to the autoimmune population, they can give wrong advice for their limiting your diet. Um, and as Willow was saying, not being able to eat eggs could be a big problem for her because fat and protein is really great to start your day with. And for some people, unnecessarily eliminating that could be a big problem. So what I feel like is missing from them is accurate food mapping. Uh, I'm willing to put a, put money on this, that if we were to put them through food mapping, um, there's probably an 80% likelihood that it may not be a true um, egg positive. But at the same time, no one else on the planet really is teaching this. Um, because, I mean, having worked with, you know, thousands of people with autoimmune disease and seeing these test results, I know that the autoimmune population can test false positive for eggs a lot. And I do have a way to tell what's real and what's not, whereas a lot of physicians who don't specialize in autoimmunity may not understand that. But um, I'm really glad they're bringing this topic up, though, and that she's at least addressing maybe, you know, maybe some of these foods is triggering some of these uh, symptoms. But I'm going to tell you is some most people guess using elimination diets, uh, other people will use food sensitivity testing that are inaccurate and even good physicians using good tests can actually give wrong results sometimes because they don't realize that people with autoimmune disease can have false positive or negatives. So that's just my take on that clip. Let's go to the next one. Exactly. I was talking about Lisa. That's perfect. So if we're hypersensitive, then how do you decipher the results? Yeah, that's okay. a problem. You ready? Yes. Now, you got a sensitive stomach. You're always talking about it. You're tired. Mm -hmm. We found something that's causing a lot of your stomach issues. Oh, okay. And it's something that affects about 8% of the population. Okay. Which is a okay. parasite. <gasps> okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. All right. So now let's talk infection. And then the whole family freaks out, okay? And they put it on this episode and they're touting it as, oh my God, this is the secret holy grail. This is why Jada has all these problems. It's a parasite. Now, I'm yawning. I'm like, oh, I'm really yawning actually. <laughs> I'm yawning at this because think about this, okay? Think about this. Jada has autoimmune issues, okay? Now, if you have autoimmune disease, your immune system, which should be fighting parasites and germs, says, now I'm not going to fight them. I'm going to kill you instead. So for her, let's say it's going against cells, cells on her scalp. Her immune system is busy looking at her scalp and says, you're an invader and I'm going to kill you. So how good is it at fighting any germs, whether it's fungus, parasites, bacteria, whatever it is? Not very good. So people with autoimmune disease have gut infections all the freaking time. It's not news. It's not shocking. In fact, for me, it's like boring in some ways. And the focus is wrong. I'm going to tell you the focus is wrong. 
Yes, she does have a parasite. But to me, the fact that she has a parasite is the end result of all these other autoimmune issues not being calmed down. So if her autoimmune, if her immune system is busy killing her, it's not calmed down, she's not going to fight infection. Of course she's going to have an infection. And here's the problem. They're going to spend the next months, years, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars trying to kill this parasite. How many of you out there are like, I've been killing SIBO for ages. I've been killing Candida for 20 years. I've been, you know, like this is like the typical story I hear all the time. But that's just one of the end results of having an autoimmune and an immune system that's not calmed down. You haven't stopped feeding the autoimmune attack. Instead, you're like, I'm going to go kill this parasite. It's the holy grail. That's the problem. That's not the problem, my dear. The problem is the fire hose hasn't been shut down. Your immune system is busy still trying to kill you. So how do we stop that? Right? So how do we stop that? Again, I'm going to go ahead and put this right up here. Okay. Why does Jada, Jada have a parasite? Number one, okay, let's take a look, okay? She um, hasn't, let's start with food mapping. She hasn't done food mapping to know exactly, well, how do I know she hasn't done food mapping because I created food mapping, okay? So she hasn't done food mapping, number one, to know which foods is triggering the war zone in her gut. So her gut is a war zone because it's fighting all these foods, okay? That's number one, the environment is shitty, okay? So food mapping, get rid of the allergens that you know with a specific method that you know that's accurate, okay? So clean up the environment. Number two, let's go up to blood sugar, okay? Her family's blood sugar is uh, it's a, it's a shit show, up and down, up and down, up and down. How do I know she has a parasite? You Infections don't thrive in an environment where blood sugar is mastered. They really like to thrive in an environment where there's a lot of blood sugar swings of high, low, high, low. So I know by the mere fact that the, her, she has um, she has the uh, parasite or any any of you that have an infection is that you do not have blood sugar mastery. So that's why another reason why she has a, an infection. Number three, the other thing is nutrient and vitamin deficiency. We already know she and her entire family have these B12 deficiencies. Her son has these bloating, nausea feeling when they eat. I already told you she already has known autoimmune issues with her hair. So what's the likelihood she has a digestive issue that's causing all these nutri nutri nutrient deficiency? Just blood sugar, just low uh, stomach acid alone, that's already 90% of you. So she, of course, has low stomach acid. Think about this. The low stomach acid, which is causing those nu nutrient deficiencies, is used by your body to kill germs. It's your first line of defense. So if 90% of you have low stomach acid, how many of you are going to have gut infections as a result of that, as a result of not addressing digestion? At least 90% of you. So, oh my God, I'm so shocked, right? That she has a parasite. I'm not at all. And then yet people will come in and they'll, how many of you have infections? Type in chat right now are dealing with infection right now. And people will come in and they think that's the main issue. The whole focus of this on her gut health is, oh my God, she has a parasite. No, that's the wrong focus. The focus is she has an autoimmune disease. She has an autoimmune disease that isn't calmed down yet. And if it's not, and, and with the autoimmune disease, she's got food allergies, blood sugar issues, digestive issues up the shit storm. You got to deal with those. And if you dealt with those, you wouldn't, you may not never even have to treat the parasite. She might not never have gotten the parasite in the first place. It's what's feeding and creating that environment that created the parasite in the first place. That's where the focus should be. And this is why we get, we talk to a lot of you all the time. I got SIBO the sixth time. I got Candida the sixth time. Well, it's going to keep coming back over and over and over again because you're missing the boat just like they are. Um, with the focus on that infection rather than what's causing and feeding the environment that causes these infection to set and thrive. Is that resonating with you guys? Is this making sense? Uh, who's dealing with infection in their uh, type in chat right now? Okay. So I hope that you guys understand that that is what I think is really missing here um, is let's take a look at this. Okay. Um, what I just said here is that the reason the gut health pillar I think is, is not being dealt with here is that we're talking about digestion and gut healing. Okay. Digestion isn't being addressed here. Okay. And the acknowledgement that with the autoimmune population, digestion has to be addressed. And there's no gut healing that's happening for anybody in this family because they got digestive issues. They got food sensitivity issues that they don't know about. And they got blood sugar issues up and down like crazy. Um, with genetics from being African American, but also genetics of autoimmunity makes blood sugar challenges incredibly super hard. So blood sugar mastery is going to be a big challenge for them as well. Now, something is missing in this whole conversation. 
Okay. And which pillar haven't I talked about? Which pillar hasn't he talked about? Anyone know? <laughs> um, I love that people are coming in with comments about having sinusitis. Yes. Uh, that's, that's as well. Chronic urinary tract infections, you name it. The missing piece of this whole thing, hormones. Okay. Um, there is really not much conversation around hormones. And I can tell you looking across that, that, that red table. Oh my gosh. Is there hormonal hell right there? Do you know that with Jada's, um, alopecia, it's autoimmune. Yes. But did you know that one of the mechanisms that autoimmune, um, so you can get autoimmune alopecia where it's attacking the hair follicles. But the other reason that one of the most common reasons that people lose hair on their hair head is what we call androgenic or hormonal related hair loss. Hormones is a big part of this issue for anybody with hair loss or alopecia or baldness, right? And it's not just the only mechanism isn't just, oh, there's an autoimmune disease attacking the hair follicles. That definitely is the issue here for, for her, number one. But the other thing is, I know she's in hormonal hell. I know her Jada's mom is in hormonal hell, and even her kids are in hormonal hell. Um, because believe it or not, do you know that the number one trigger of all these autoimmune flares up and down is fluctuating hormones? fluctuating hormones. Okay. Uh, Jaden's at the age where his hormones are coming up. Willow is menstruating every month. So her hormones are going up and down all the time, which is why women have more autoimmune flares than men, because we have these monthly cycles. Okay. And then for, for, um, for Jada, she's at the age she's, I think she's similar to my age where we're going through a lot of early or late or middle or after menopausal changes. Um, this is why her hair loss has accelerated like crazy. This is why she ended up deciding to shave her head because there's been an acceleration in, in her hair loss. And it's not by accident is happening for her around this age where her hormones are like going, woo, woo, woo. Can I do that again? <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Um, so even for people with autoimmune disease that are women and men go through this in a different way as well. So don't men, you're not out of the, out of the woods on this at all, because there are definitely autoimmune changes with hormones for men as well. But for women, uh, when we go through any time between 35 and 55 there, our hormones are changing even faster than the regular population. And unfortunately for us, any dip of these hormones or shift in these hormones triggers the autoimmunity. And how many of you, and I'm not, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to uh, say I know this. But I'm just going to guess this. I can tell you right now that looking at Jada's uh, symptoms and her family symptoms, I would not be surprised, for example, if there's a history for her where after the birth of each of her children, there's some new symptoms that started. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised that when she, if she's postmenopausal, that when she was having periods, that certain times of the month, she noticed that there were symptoms that were, whether it's her gut, her joints, or her hair would be worse, or her mood, or her sleep would be worse. I wouldn't even be surprised right now that she's in the middle of a menopause, uh, and she's starting to have hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, anxiety, irritability right now, just because this is what we all go through. Uh, around this time. So what you're seeing here is that the reason she's getting so much worse right now is because her hormones are going through dramatic change and no one's talking about this. And in fact, nobody talks about hormones in relation to autoimmunity. So for me, you have to master those hormones. And the problem is very few hormone experts. There's very few true hormone experts out there. And just because someone's a functional medicine doc does not make them an expert in hormones and especially in dealing with autoimmunity. How do I know that? I am one of those docs who were trained in family medicine for 10 years. I went through all the functional medicine training and I had my own hormonal health and early menopause at the age of 36. I was the one who postpartum started my Hashimoto's and I didn't even know I had Hashimoto's. Postpartum, I had a C. diff gut infection. I didn't even know it was related to autoimmunity. I had diabetes all over my family. I didn't even know that that was an autoimmune disease as a doctor. So what I'm trying to tell you here is, is that doctors are very ill-educated about autoimmunity, including functional medicine doctors. And what I can tell you here is this, is that what I see with functional medicine docs or naturopaths who are do work, doing work in hormones and are the hormone experts, they're busy selling pellets and, and bioidentical hormones because that makes money. And taking hormones or doing pellets does not mean you have hormone balance. Why? So many people are coming into our program with 
RA, that's worse. Crohn's, that's worse. Ulcerative colitis, worse. Their PMR is worse. Their lupus is worse. And they're on hormones, supposedly seeing a hormone expert. And the funny thing is this, when they show us the results, I can tell you right now, um, they're told, oh, these, your hormones are balanced and you're doing great. I look at the hormone results and I'm like, these are a shit storm. There are pat this is pattern one, this is pattern two, this is pattern three that triggers autoimmune disease. This is not balanced hormones. I see this all the time. And what I love to do is have alumni who's actually, or people who've been through my hormone masterclass here, uh, talk about what have you learned about your hormones that's been a game changer for your autoimmunity, right? Uh, and for me, uh, it's <laughs> it's so huge that I can already see in her is that um, she is not, her hormones are not balanced. I can tell you that right now. And neither are her kids' hormones balanced. And I can tell you that most people don't know how to test their hormones accurately, including their doctors. Okay. And they don't know the patterns that trigger autoimmune disease. I had a meeting. Um, we had a, we had somebody we talked, reviewed hormones with today. Um, I, you know, we review hormones in the program in a group all the time. And the funny thing was she was PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And yet I could tell you when I looked at her results, no doctor on the planet could have figured that out. And yet it was sitting in plain sight. This happens all the time in our program because I see my superpower is I see patterns. I see patterns where other people miss. And that includes hormones and specifically even hormones. So I can tell you right now, I'm not proud to say it. I wish that I didn't have to say it, but I think I'm the only doctor on the planet who would have called it PCOS. Um, and it was true because once I called it, I said, do you, do you know your PCOS? And she's like, oh my God. And I was like, okay, your results looking at it straight. No one would know that, but look at this and look at this. Now, can you tell biochemistry wise, why that would, you were, you were PCOS and you're still PCOS. She's like, yes. I go, well, then let's go through a symptom checklist. I went through a symptom checklist and it turns out she had all the symptoms of PCOS her entire life. She's now postmenopausal. She still has PCOS, but at the same time, that would have that pattern could have been completely um, that that will be completely missed by anybody else looking at those results. I love the fact that I'm able to say, "Hey, I'm here, and I'm a resource. I've been through this. I've been through." probably 10,000 results at this point in my life. To, and I'm able to teach people how to recognize these patterns. I love that I'm able to do that. I'm sad nobody else is able to teach other people that, right? But I'm glad that I can do that. And why is it important to know that this particular person has PCOS? And she, but Jada mate as well, that's a common pattern where it can cause uh, hair loss, just so you know. Um, but there are other patterns that could cause it. But why is it important to know your hormone pattern? Example, PCOS. Well, it's important to know because number one is PCOS is a precursor to diabetes, which I just told you is an autoimmune disease. So is PCOS an autoimmune disease? Yes. Huh. When are we in a chicken dinner? And if you understood that and you knew you had PCOS 30 years ago, how much of this other autoimmune hell could that have prevented in you? Better yet. If you can identify this pattern in your child or your teenager, how important it is for, for you to have the tool to be able to understand that and to give your child the tools to kill Godzilla while he's an egg, right? So this hormone thing, I cannot under, understate how important that is and why for me, it's really missing here. Like for me, if I was uh, working with this family, they would have their hormones tested, their adrenals tested, full thyroid panel tested. And most importantly, I would be educating them to understand these patterns in the way that I just explained it. So that what? They can retest these hormones. They can retest these thyroid. They can retest these vitamin levels and be like, oh, I need to, I need to add more digestive enzymes. Hey, I need to actually work on those, that, um, that hormone issue. I need to work on my liver. They need to know what's feeding and causing those problems. So for me, I love being able to, I mean, I know this is a lot. This is probably overwhelming and you probably never heard this much content in a 49 minute episode, I guess. Um, but I really wanted you to understand um, just how much, even with money, fame, um, um, and access, that people with autoimmune disease don't even understand that. And in plain sight, so many patterns are hidden um, they can be on the spot for hitting some of the right things, but here's the thing. They're doing whack-a-mole because they're not turning off the fire hose. And then there are crucial pieces that are missing for them, like the food mapping and the hormones 
that they will never get the outcome that they really need to stop the autoimmunity. So I want to emphasize here, the point is this, is that not only do you need the content of everything in the five pillars that I talk about right here, right? When you look at the content here, um, but it's important to have the, everything here to, add, to work together. But the other piece of this is it's really important to do them in the right order. Okay. Because a lot of people will go into this gut health pillar and say, I have a parasite and that's what they focus on for the next six years. Wrong. They're not going to get reversal of these symptoms. They will go bald and they could go bald permanently with permanent results because this is what I call the whack-a-mole method. I love the presentation that Dr. Hyman did, um, Mark did with going over with them some of these key issues because he's identified more issues related to autoimmunity than any other functional physician I've seen that I've seen on social media. Um, so he actually is identifying tons of these issues that are really important in the family. But I think what's important here is that the discussion isn't really around the autoimmune framework, that this is a big autoimmune problem. This is the elephant sitting in their living room. And I think that a lot of really good functional physicians and naturopaths can hit pieces of this. But at the end of it, these people still don't get reversal of their symptoms or turn around their autoimmunity like we do in our program because these pieces are still missing. Just because you're a great functional physician, just because you have fame you know, and access doesn't mean you can master turning around your autoimmunity. And I hope that going through this video, this model really has helped open your eyes as to what you really need to do to turn around autoimmune. Okay. So, wow, I'm almost at an hour. I hope that was super helpful. Uh, thank you for um, all these issues um, that you guys are bringing up here. Just the comments. Someone said hormones are key to my issues and have been completely overlooked by my family physician, OBGYN and naturopaths, just so you know. Uh, I love that. Um, so thank you for all these comments. Those of you, if you're interested, um, uh, oh, I like this question. Wendy says, can you regulate hormones with food choices? Yes. Not by an elimination diet, by food mapping, and then understanding um, um, how to do blood sugar mastery and also understanding how to support your liver, which is what breaks down your hormones. By the way, what breaks down your hormones? Number one step is liver. Second step is your bacteria in your large intestine. How do you fix those? Everything in the five pillars that we just talked about. Absolutely, there's so much with food, with lifestyle, with mindset, uh, with and with an understanding around the autoimmune um, transform protocol. You absolutely can turn this stuff around. Uh, it's not, I mean, it looks hard and it's really complicated because it is. Um, it's, but for me, it's simple, it's simple, but not easy. Right. And that's why having the right mentorship, not just the right testing, but having the right mentorship, the right framework, the right order is really important. If you're interested in learning more about our program or working with me, uh, we're going to put a link below to start a chat with our team. On top of this video, there's also a link to chat with our team. Chat with our team. Tell us what autoimmune struggles you have, what hormonal struggles or gut issues or blood sugar issues you have. And we'd love to hook you up because I, with resources up the wazoo because I've made hundreds and hundreds, I've spent thousands of hours creating content um, to educate you guys. Whether or not you work with me, I'm just telling you, this is what it's going to take to turn around your autoimmunity. And I hope that has shed some light and help inspire you um, to really think bigger and to understand how big of an issue this is and what kind of approach exactly is gonna get you out of this. So I hope that was helpful, everybody. Uh, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're watching this on YouTube, give me a subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up. Comment in the comment section below. Uh, tell me what's one thing that you learned here that was mind blowing for you. Tell me one thing. Come on, give me some one thing back. Uh, not everybody's going to want to sit here for an hour just teaching you, um, giving you all these pearls, right? Just give me one thing back. Tell me one thing that really resonated with you. The other thing that you can do is type in one name in the comment section, somebody you know that could benefit from watching this video. And if you're an alumni and you're watching, tell me one result that you got um, from this program in the comment section. I love you forever. So let's do that. Let's share the wealth. Raising awareness, all our awareness to a higher level is my passion and my mission in dealing with autoimmunity. Love you all. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful evening.
I hope Jada and the family does get to see this video too, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm, I meant this in the best way. I was, I'm, I meant to do this to be able to be of help and to offer additional insight. By no means critical of them. Uh, I think it's wonderful what they did with their family. And I love the work that Mark Hyman did with them. And I think it's really inspirational. I just wanted to add to the conversation. So I hope that was helpful, everybody. <laughs>